What's going on everybody? This is Dana Worthy. Um, today I'm going to be doing a series of videos for uh, introductory uh, jQuery development. Uh, the focus of this series was uh, geared towards uh, primarily uh, back-end developers who uh, eventually are going to be touching a front-end. Uh, nowadays it's, it's really hard to do web development without touching a little bit of the front-end and doing some JavaScript and one of the more popular frameworks out there is jQuery. Um, so what we're going to be doing is taking this very simple uh, standard form that does a, a, a standard post back um, and we're going to be wiring up some uh, front end validation. Uh, we're also going to be going through some of the other essentials uh, of uh, jQuery. So to start things off we're going to go to jQuery.com and grab the latest version of jQuery. Uh, it's very important to always keep um, to always use the latest version of jQuery. Right now we're on 1.10.2. Every time they upgrade, there's some pretty uh, drastic uh, performance improvements with them. So on our page, we're going to open up a script tag and set our source to the URL that we just copied. Now what this is gonna do, this is referencing a CDN version of jQuery. Uh, Google also has one, um, which it's a little bit more common to uh, to use. Um, actually, let's just use that one instead. So to start things off, uh, after getting jQuery, we're going to create our JavaScript file for uh, traversing our elements um, in our form. So it's real common to include all your script on your standard page, but it kind of uh, hinders reusability of JavaScript code. Um, so what we're going to do, we're going to add a folder called scripts. <laughs> we're going to create, uh, this is the, the folder structure, I typically do an ASP.NET um, MVC. Um, as you see we have our, essentially our HTML pages are inside of views and then home. So what we're going to do is we're going to create a folder called views and well actually I take that back we're just gonna since this is a single page application we're just gonna do uh, new JavaScript file home index yes. so if we were doing a relatively large application I would have done scripts views home home index.js. That way there's one file for each page, um, making it easy to find each file um, and, and, and uh, modify your code. Um, and then we'd also put all of our accessory functions into a different file. So anyway, we're going to go ahead and create our uh, home index object. Uh, now, now uh, kind of how this is going to work is it's it's a JavaScript uh, pattern where we're going to create an object and uh, going to um, essentially create a bunch of public functions that we can reference onto our page. Let's see here, console, not a blog. So I'm creating a home index in it um, for initialize and. So on our page to call that we're going to within Visual Studio you can just drag and, and drop a script file and it'll auto reference it. Now open up create a script tag. Now we're going to do the shortcut for document.ready. Now this file this is a jQuery function that fires after um, kind of speaks for itself as document ready. Uh, that's after all the DOM loads and uh, it's the uh, elements are ready for, for display on the screen. And so we're going to call home index uh, init and let's pull up our console here. And so now if we oh, since we submitted the form already it's wanting to resubmit it. So we now have a console to uh, console log of testing. I think I'm, I may end up needing to switch over to Firefox to show kind of some of the other stuff we're going to be doing. But uh, anyway, so 
what we're going to do now is I'm going to open up both these tabs so that we can look a little bit closer and, and, and get a better idea of what we're doing, uh, how, how jQuery selectors work. Selectors are kind of the core of, uh, of jQuery. Um, typically in, let's say, ASP.NET Forms, we were wanting to reference this input of first name uh, inside of our code behind it. We do first name dot text or w whatnot. In JavaScript, we have to go and find that element um, on the page. And so uh, that's where a jQuery selector uh, is extremely useful because with a selector, we can, there are several uh, ways of, of grabbing this element to modify it or uh, read some properties. Uh, probably the, the uh, easiest one to learn, um, we're, we're going to select our form up here. We're just going to call it var form. And we're going to use hashtag frm contact. I end up misspelling it, sorry. Um, so what this is going to do is going to go out to our, our our DOM and grab the form and then cram it into a jQuery object. Um, one of the older ways, or it's not necessarily older, but another way to do this would be um, to use the old school method of um, selecting element of that by ID, which is document.get element by ID. So this is the is essentially the exact same thing um, behind the scenes. So um, what we're doing is we're going get getting the HTML DOM object and then cramming it into a jQuery um, uh, uh, selector object, which converts it into the same thing that we have up here. Uh, some other things we can do uh, through selectors is you can select by class name. This is something that was really popular um, to do with. Uh, inside of ASP.NET Forms, uh, since your uh, ID tags would frequently get um, kind of messed up um, when you apply the run at server, it would apply, uh, it would create a really long ID, so it's really difficult to uh, select by ID. So we're going to uh, to select, let's say, this div with a class of validation summary. You'll just use a period. And so, uh, so the uh, the selector class is actually called um, JS Sizzle, I believe, um, and it operates just like CSS. So if you're a front end developer who's who's done a lot of um, CSS work, selector is going to be extremely familiar. There's some stuff we can do in selectors uh, inside of jQuery that doesn't work out as well in CSS, um, primarily due to browser. Uh, compatibility issues but this is probably one of the more uh, common selectors that uh, you'll see around since it's it's rare for uh, your validation or I'm sorry it's it's rare for classes to get a lot of extra stuff around them additionally you'll be selecting you can select a, a large number of um, a collection of items and so uh, one other uh, some of the other selectors that we can do, particularly for this form, uh, is let's say we're going to find our input, uh, our input submit. And so, um, let's see here. Instead of the way how how this selector works is that it starts from the top of the DOM and and finds your element. Um, so, since we've selected this form object, what we can do is we can use a method to actually crawl only what's inside of the form tag. So what we're going to do is we're going to reference our form tag and then find this uh, input submit button. So we're going to go to our button submit equals form dot find. This is a jQuery um, function. And we're going to use a little bit more of an advanced selector. Um, so you can uh, plain text with no additional items on it like this. This would select all the input tags inside of our um, inside of our form. This is very much like the document dot get element by tag name. Now we're going to tack on an attribute selector. Equals submit 
console, not log, button submit just to make sure we got it. And so we are going to hop back over here, refresh. Okay, so it's just saying object, so. Um, uh, okay, so it's, it's just saying object. Let me fire up uh, Firefox and with Firefox and Chrome, you're actually able to uh, view the object inside of the, the Firebug console, so it's, it's, it's quite a bit more useful. So up here we get our button submit. Uh, Firebug and, and the Chrome tools are really good for uh, testing jQuery selectors, because we, we can actually, down here in, our, in, in the console, we can do uh, dot valid. Oh, let's, let's, see here. let's just do um, input checkbox. So it's going to find our checkboxes on the page. <laughs> so, or yeah, our single checkbox on the page. And if you go into the object part of it, it's going to give you all the jQuery functions that we can do to it, and also some of the standard. Uh, DOM properties and attributes so that would be inside of uh, let's see here I believe it's this top one yeah and so um, get access to uh, whether it's checked and all this other stuff this is your standard core JavaScript um, uh, items available so moving on uh, another uh, really useful selector this is more so for um, this will be more so for like a listing or a table um, cells is um, so we're gonna do um, odds we're gonna select all the odd inputs out of the uh, out of the form so we're gonna input we use uh, colon odd then uh, just odds dot let's do CSS background. We're going to set the background to all of these to green. Doesn't work on this one due to it being a select box. So let's switch that to even. So there we go. Worked that time. Um, so if you're wanting to add zebra striping to uh, a table element or anything like that. That's something that's real easy to use to, to do that. Right, so for the purpose of later tutorials, we're going to select our our checkbox. And then we're also going to find our drop-down list. Our select cell type equals form find select all right so uh, one thing that that uh, the, the, this is going to be the last thing we're going to do in this video is kind of show you how to uh, move up the chain of, of Dom elements so let's say for instance you find uh, you select out this input box and for validation reasons you want to apply something to our parent form. <laughs> Um, so let's say, for instance, uh, you're you're gonna give a, a data attribute or a, a style class of invalid to your form if one of these is 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 bad and instead or invalid and instead of reselecting from the, the the entire DOM, you just want to traverse back up the uh, the DOM to do that. And so um, to do that, you can uh, use there's there's two methods of doing that. And so we're just going to console log these, so it's it's more visual to do that. Um, we're going to form dot find. We're going to find a label dot parent. Now this is going to give you the immediate parent element of the uh, the immediate the immediate uh, tag parent of the selected object. Now the other one that I've, I use more often is the parents, which you actually pass in a jQuery selector for this. I feel like this is a little bit safer because you never know when somebody else is going to get into your uh, 
into your uh, JavaScript or your HTML and maybe they'll wrap um, your element with an additional one. Parent will become irrelevant if if you went from so for instance right here we have a label the parent to it is field set but if somebody comes back in and wraps a div around it the new parent becomes the div and so if you're wanting to add a class to this it wouldn't work anymore so uh, with all that saved and run go ahead and hit F5 again so we still have that initial fi field so this is the, the result from the the parent selector and this one was the one from the parents so you pass in a jQuery selector of what you're wanting to find so crawl back up the DOM until you find this and so that sums up uh, the essential basic core of, um, of jQuery selectors uh, and just to kind of uh, the let you know the toolings I'm using right now and where you can find this code. I should have done this at the beginning, but uh, I'm using Visual Studio 2013. Um, you can use uh, Visual Studio Express 2013 for this project if you want to run it on your own. Also, the project is available on GitHub. Um, I will be including URLs for all these items and stuff and a few other tools to use, like a jQuery selector tester. Um, inside the, the, the description for this video. Thank you for watching, and we will see you on the next one.